take this Mr. Honeywell for bringing us out our new microphone. And now you can hear what I'm going to say. Now, we have a pair of horses in the ring here. These are a pair of Clydesdales who belong to Charles Coffin, who is one of our foremost ploughmen. And what we've done, we've brought one horse fully harnessed up into the ring. And now we're going to harness up the other horse piece by piece so you can see the detail that goes into this beautiful prize winning decorated plough harness. Now before we put any harness on the horse, we must make sure the horse is clean because we don't want to spend hours cleaning our harness and need to put it on a dirty horse. So before a show or a ploughing match, the horse's bodies are brushed and groomed and the white hair or feather on the legs is washed and dried with a special fine sawdust called wood flour, which helps to dry the feather and give it this lovely silky white appearance. Also, the horse's mane and tail are plaited in Charles's red and white colours. There's not really a practical reason to plait the mane, but it does help to show off the horse's neck. And his long tail is plaited up to keep it from becoming entangled in the reins or the traces. But then at the end of the day, when the horse goes out in the field, he still has his natural protection against flies and midges. So once our horse is ready, we can start to put our harness on. So the first piece that goes on is the horse's collar. And as you see, this goes over the horse's head and sits here on his shoulders. Now this is the most important part of the harness because to move a load such a plow, as a plough, the horse has to push his weight forwards into the collar. So it's very important that the collar fits properly. If it's too big, it can rub. If it's too tight, it can restrict the horse's breathing. All of which makes it very difficult for a horse to do his work properly. So it's very important that the collar fits. Now the collar is made of leather, slock lined and stuffed with rye straw. Modern technology has never been able to better rye straw because not only is it sweat absorbent, over time it will mould itself to the shape of the horse's shoulders, giving a perfect comfortable fit for him to work in. Now also now we fit some hames to the collar. Now these are usually made of metal or wood, encased in brass to make them nice and shiny. And they sit in a channel on the collar and these will take the weight of the traces, which are the chains that join horse and implement. Now the next thing we put on is the horse's backing and cripper. Now the backing goes around the horse's middle. And the cripper is secured under the horse's tail. and runs through the backing and is attached to a strap on the back of the horse's collar. This will help to stop the collar from sliding forward if the horse were to put his head down and start eating if he was working in long grass. We also now fit a martingale to the bottom of the collar. Now there's not really a practical reason for having a martingale on a plough horse, but it is a good place for Charles to display some of the many brasses that he's gained during his long ploughing career. Now the origin of horse brasses many years ago was to ward off the evil eye and to protect the horse and the owner from bad luck. Nowadays they're often given as prizes and mementos at some of the many ploughing matches we attend. Now the next thing we fit are the traces which are steel chains nickel plated to make them nice and shiny and as you can see they run back from the horse's collar to his belly band and for the moment they're hooked onto a ring on the top of the cripper to prevent them from dragging in the dirt and also from becoming entangled in the horse's legs. Now the next piece we're going to fit is the housing, which sits on top of the horse's collar. And although this is very decorative, it does also have a practical purpose, because if we're working in driving rain or snow, 
You could use this to lie across the back of the collar to prevent the rain or snow from coming in under the collar and giving the horse a sore shoulder. However, for the moment, because the weather gods are smiling on us, we'll let it stand up and look nice and decorative. Now the two horses we have in the ring here today are Jim and Sinbad. Jim is the one here who's being harnessed up for work and his partner is Sinbad. Now Sinbad a few years ago was a top show horse with David Bowland who you will see in the ring later on this afternoon and now he's retired to have, have a slightly quieter life learning to be a plough horse. Jim came to us a few years ago from Ireland as part of a ploughing pair although we soon realised that when we tried to plough with him he'd actually never been near a plough in his life so he's been on a steep learning curve the last couple of years but he's finally learning to be a sensible useful horse. We're now putting some extra brass and decorations onto the harness. Now if we were just out for a day's work in the fields, we wouldn't have all this extra brass and decoration on the horses. Now the full set of this decorated harness can take up to 12 hours to properly strip down and clean, even more if it's become wet or muddy. So as you can imagine, after a hard day in the fields, the last thing you want to do is sit down and clean harness all evening. So all of the best harness was carefully stored away and would only come out on special occasions such as the local show or ploughing match. And even today, if we get to a ploughing match and it rains, it all stays in the box. <coughs> right, now Jim, it's hat time. You see, we're fitting some decorative ear caps to Jim. He's not very fond of these. Now, although these are very decorative and again match our red and white <coughs> colours, they do have an important practical purpose because in the summer, horses can be driven mad by flies and midges buzzing around their ears because the horse's ears are lined with very fine, sensitive hairs. So in the summer, it would be quite common to see horses working in the fields wearing these. It's not a new idea. In fact, ancient Mesopotamian art from the first millennium BC shows horses wearing very similar ear coverings. So as the old saying goes, there really is nothing new under the sun. Now the next thing we fit are some decorative bells and horsehair plumes. Now these bells actually belong to Charles' father and grandfather and are well over 100 years old. And this is a testament to the quality of English